So this is the agenda for today. Uh, there's a very short introduction and summary of the AFAS T group discussion. Then we would like to hear a little bit from countries, uh, very short uh, um, interventions from each one of us here. And then we have a short Q&A and reactions from the particip participations. And then we'll go to the main topic, which is uh, how to avoid spreading of, mis of misinformation related to uh, COVID-19. And we'll show you also the summary of the, the recommendations. Then we can again come to uh, question and answers and reaction, and we'll see uh, how we move forward what will be the way forward in COVID-19 uh, in the AFAS network. So that is our uh, agenda summary. I'll translate quickly in French. Donc, notre agenda pour ce webinar se divise uh, en uh, huit parties. D'abord, une brève introduction, ensuite un résumé de ce qui a été fait, donc, uh, durant uh, les trois premières semaines. Ensuite, on va écouter un peu de vos nouvelles. Et ensuite, on va euh, euh, pouvoir discuter, échanger un peu, poser des questions. Ensuite, c'est le gros du sujet. Comment est-ce qu'on évite la dissémination des informations, des fausses informations? Donc ça, ça va être euh, notre euh, principale discussion. Et à la fin, donc, on va voir comment est-ce qu'on va évoluer dans le futur par rapport à tout ça. Donc, voilà. Sans tarder, je vais donner la parole à, à Max. So, Max, um, the floor is yours. OK, thank you, uh, André. And welcome everyone to this first webinar on our perspectives on the COVID-19 uh, pandemic in relation to how we are working as the extension Rural Advisory Services Fraternity. So as already Andre has uh, mentioned about the, the agenda of the day. I would like again to welcome you and uh, encourage a lot of participation and sharing of the current status of our work vis-a-vis uh, -vis the COVID-19. Uh, so uh, we are also expecting more participants to join and, and uh, to kickstart the program, I think, Andre, you go straight to the summary. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Max. So let me go to the summary then. Okay, so do you see my screen, actually? So this is a summary. Yes, a summary, we can see it. Yes, the summary of the D groups e discussion on COVID-19. Um, so we had, during the past three weeks, we received more than 45 contributions from AFAS members and from friends from other continents about uh, COVID-19. And um, the, of course, the, the discussion, the information that we received was largely centered on global pandemic and how it has affected not only the health sector, but also the social, economical, and especially that the agriculture um, sector. So uh, this was a very, 
intense and active uh, e-discussion. And we received uh, many advices. Uh, the, some of them are about safety, some about the dissemination of uh, different kind of information to farmers, about the access to information and the use of digitization uh, uh, systems, about advocacy, and uh, about also some um, localization, uh, localizing extension information using local language, and so on. Um, we've seen also uh, that some countries already uh, conducted quick studies uh, and uh, that there is a need for more funding for extension actors to cater for growing needs and motivation as frontline agents. So these are some of the findings that we, 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 we collected. We've also noticed that some countries has already started producing sensitization material. Uh, especially we've seen uh, some videos from produced from the NIFAS, the Nigerian uh, Forum. We've received from DRC, Congo, from Malawi, from Cote d'Ivoire. We've seen also something happening in Ethiopia and so on. So it seems that uh, we are moving the right direction. Then we've, we've seen a lot of resources shared with links, especially from uh, foreign countries like Switzerland, like uh, Access Agriculture in Kenya and England and so on. Um, we have also received uh, some, uh, some uh, animations um, using local language and uh, you'll be amazed to see that uh, the scientific animation without borders has produced so many animations using local language even malian language malagasy language zulu portuguese east africa uh, swahili and so on so you can check some of this uh, resource on the link that you see here if uh, you are more interested to come back to that now, there were some key recommendations that uh, the involvement of decision maker, makers is uh, very important. And some uh, African governments have already uh, really um, started developing and updating their agricultural policy, actually. Um, there was also a recommendation on, of course, the the use of e-extension to, to interact with producers, for instance, in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, and um, in Sierra Leone, they have got some experience uh, from uh, the Ebola crisis, we know. So they have produced, uh, they are also using radio for sensitization. Um, the one of the recommendations has been to, to put more funding, uh, to inject more funding in extension, so as to boost the operational needs during and post COVID-19. Of course, this is a crisis and the effect will be, uh, we don't know yet uh, what will happen uh, tomorrow, uh, in the next month, what will be the real impact of this COVID. So um, partnership is key and uh, at this juncture between national governments and development agencies, NGOs inclusive, to uh, forge a way forward. So these are some recommendations that we've received. Now uh, there are some challenges that uh, we've also uh, collected, especially um, uh, along uh, along the, the agriculture value chain, we heard, of course, about the locust invasion, especially uh, in the eastern horn of Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia. We have also seen the problem of uh, climate change and lack of reliable information concerning seasonal changes. So these are the in a summary, what we collected from you during the past three months, it was uh, 
I would say, an intensive uh, um, discussion. And uh, I would like to thank everyone for participating in, in that uh, e discussion. So just to summarize quickly for the French speaking countries, Donc, il était question de, de, de trois mois, trois semaines de discussion sur le COVID-19 euh, à l'intérieur du réseau AFAS. Et nous avons pu constater une grande participation jusqu'à 35 contributions, dans lesquelles on a pu voir donc que le COVID-19 n'est pas seulement un aspect social, de santé, mais c'est aussi un aspect très euh, économique et euh, lié à l'agriculture, surtout, ce qui nous concerne. Nous avons vu plusieurs recommandations sur l'aspect euh, santé, l'aspect sécurité euh, des personnes, sur la façon de faire la dissémination des informations et euh, sur l'importance donc de faire des plaidoyers Euh, et de se connecter à, à différents niveaux de, de l'État. Nous avons reçu euh, des, nous avons pu constater donc des productions de matériel de sensibilisation pour différents pays comme le Nigeria, le Congo, le Malawi, le Côte d'Ivoire et l'Éthiopie. Et euh, nous avons vu donc beaucoup de ressources partagées en ligne, euh, certains de différents pays comme la Suisse ou d'accès à l'agriculture qui est surtout l'Afrique. Et même, nous avons vu des euh, organisations comme Saobo hein, qui ont produit euh, des, des animations en différentes langues hein, locales de, 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 de l'Afrique, y compris euh, Madagascar, euh, Afrique du Sud, Afrique de l'Est avec le Swahili, etc. Vous avez donc le lien en bas là, si vous voulez voir un peu ces... Euh, ces euh, animations. Ensuite, il y a eu des, des recommandations, évidemment, l'importance de l'implication des décideurs et ensuite aussi de tous ceux qui sont concernés, euh, comme les médias. Hein, en Sierra Leone, ils ont donc une expérience sur la diffusion des informations à vers les radios et ils ont donc euh, proposé quelque chose par rapport à ça. Euh, Bon, le partenariat entre tous les acteurs, y compris le gouvernement, les agences, les ONG, euh, le secteur privé, etc., sont, euh, est, est très recommandé dans des circonstances comme celui-ci. On a vu à la fin qu'il y a quelques challenges quand même, ou quelques défis, comme l'existence actuelle de, des sauterelles, hein, les invasions de sauterelles dans euh, l'Afrique de l'Est, Et la corne de l'Afrique. Aussi, on a vu que multiplié à, au problème du, de la pandémie, nous avons aussi le changement climatique. Voilà en gros ce qu'on a pu donc collecter sur euh, ce, 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 cette discussion en ligne. So, Mr. Max, we finish this part about uh, summarizing the, the previous uh, discussion. Maybe we can go to the next agenda. Yeah, thank you, Andre. And uh, what we shall now do is uh, open a bit for members to reflect in case of some uh, reflections, some quick experience from any of the participants so we, we try to keep time, be very brief, so that we, uh, we move to the next agenda item. So we are open now for quick uh, reactions from the participants. Are there hands? Oh, it seems there's no hand. So there's no other, no other experience to be shared from other countries then. Try to translate it in French. Est-ce qu'il y a des expériences d'autres pays qu'ils veulent partager ou bien euh, par rapport à ce qui a été dit, on a vu donc euh, le Nigeria, euh, 
à partager quelque chose. On a vu aussi des pays comme euh, Côte d'Ivoire ou bien le Congo, DRC, qui ont partagé quelque chose. Est-ce qu'il y en a qui, qui veulent aussi partager autre chose par rapport à la situation dans leur pays? Comment est-ce que vous faites le, la lutte contre le, le COVID actuellement? So those who have something to share about how you are facing COVID pandemic, pandemic in your country, they you already can uh, just intervene. So, yeah, you can intervene here. There are two hands. Uh, uh, you offers, I think, Beatrice and Professor Daly. So let's start from uh, let's fr start from uh, Professor Daly. Yes, Max. Thank you very much. Once again, you're welcome. Thank Just you. to add that um, that in Nigeria, in addition to what we just said, the federal government had to also um, to the federal ministry of agriculture and uh, and and uh, rural development also call the stakeholders meeting. The key agri extension and stakeholders meeting was held also within the same um, online this Zoom. And with regards to agri extension stakeholders, the option for revitalizing agri extension in Nigeria, and also the role of extension in mitigating mitigation of the effects of COVID-19 pandemic on the performance of 2020 agri season. This was held last week in which uh, Nigeria, I mean, AFAS board member, also Arika was there also, and also myself for NIFAS. We also invited and we participated as, as a major stakeholders in the extension system in Nigeria. And of course, it was very rewarding. And the minister is looking forward for us to present a report from this meeting so they can regard to the way forward. Because this season has already started in Nigeria, and there is fear that if we don't move fast, we may be in problem with regards to our coming season. So that is one of the information again I want to give you. This and then we also took part in other webinar, even with regards to one that took place recently also in other part of the world. Just to add to what you are saying, or talking about COVID-19, that shows us it's a very important and serious issue which we need to continue to concretize and add more more fuel to what we are doing. I think it's a very good development. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Prof. So, Beatrice? Beatrice? Or, or anybody using Beatrice, working with Beatrice in the same computer? Ufas? Hello? Are you hearing me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I came in a bit very late, but at least I'm encouraged that I think two of us, uh, two other members I can see, I can see Aritha Beth and then another district person, uh, Dr. Mpira is on. Um, I didn't hear the very first part, but I just wanted to say that uh, Uganda today, we are actually, the, we are fragging off uh, a survey on the same topic, on finding out what the, um, how, what is happening with the extension actors, what are they doing, what are the challenges, uh, what are the opportunities which have come in, and maybe later we'll be able to share when we've got results. But I, I'll link up with my, my friends to see, to get the, uh, what has been discussed today. Otherwise, greetings to everybody. Hello? Okay, Bitri, thank you. What we discussed was uh, a summary of the discussions that have been taking place in the D groups. And Andre gave uh, a quick summary and um, mostly focusing okay. on the, the recommendations. So the, that will also be shared with everyone. Thank you. Okay, okay. I, I, Andre, I don't see any additional hands. Uh, maybe we we'll move to the next uh, presentation from your side. 
we also encourage people to do the the chat the chat box so we shall collect all the the discussions that you post in the chat box thank you andre yes um so I'm going to share now. Hello. Good. We are listening to you. Okay. You so I'm going to share now the result from uh, the registration, uh, the preliminary uh, preliminary questions that were asked uh, to you uh, during the during the registration. Um, so uh, we got like 20 countries who participated in the registration. I think we have like 60 uh, regist registered people, but actually we are just 20 joining. So from Benin, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Congo, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Egypt, Ethiopia, Guinea, Guinea, Conakry, and uh, Bissau, Madagascar, Malawi, Mali, Nigeria, and so on. Um, the people who registered were especially from the extension background. Extension background, some managers and people from administration, some researchers, and also some farmers. Um, there were also some funders and people from ICT for high background, project manager, and uh, even some uh, uh, family uh, farm uh, holders, householders. Um, the experience regarding fake news. This is uh, what we got in the result. So 57% responded to that question. And um, we noted that 38% uh, of uh, the participants here who responded uh, confirmed that they have been victim of misinformation. Uh, and even among those one, 70%, 17, sorry, have already shared this fake news, which is uh, um, the thing that we really need to avoid. And 70% um, are doing systematic uh, verification before spreading. Now, the percentage of misleading information um, in your experience, what percentage of information received was misleading? So most of us found that um, the information that we receive is not, there's like less than 10% that is really misleading or containing uh, fake information, fake news. 31% uh, of, of us, um, think that uh, 10 to 25 percent of the information we receive is uh, um, is uh, fake news or uh, misinformation, and then 80 percent have received even um, 26 to 35 percent of the information uh, are fake. So uh, as we can see here. Many of us are dealing, are facing this problem of, uh, of uh, fake information and, and fake uh, uh, news. And uh, maybe it's good to, to summarize this with uh, what the Director General of uh, WHO said uh, recently in the past uh, month. We are not just fighting an epidemic. But he says that we are even fighting also an infodemic, which is a, a, a spread of, a, of fake information, of misleading information. So as COVID-19 cases have surged across the globe, so has uh, uh, misinformation. 
So before continuing uh, uh, with uh, how do we deal with that, uh, maybe I will just summarize in French again. Donc, euh, nous avons eu donc une vingtaine de pays qui se sont inscrits pour cette, euh, pour cette euh, vidéoconférence. Et euh, nous voyons là donc tous les pays. Euh, ce qui a été constaté, c'est que euh, 62% des participants proviennent d'un de, de, background de vulgarisateurs. Et... Euh, environ 24% de managers ou de responsables d'administration, euh, 21% des chercheurs, ensuite il y a eu les producteurs, etc. Donc nous sommes beaucoup de vulgarisateurs dans cette, euh, dans, euh, qui ont intérêt, qui, qui s'intéressent à ce thème, à cette thématique. Maintenant, par rapport aux, aux fausses nouvelles et aux, aux nouvelles... Euh, euh, qui, qui nous induisent en erreur, il y a eu 30, 38% qui ont été victimes de ces, ces fausses nouvelles parmi nous, euh, 17% ont même partagé de ces mauvaises nouvelles et euh, pourtant nous avons quand même une bonne habitude puisque environ 70% d'entre nous euh, confirment que nous vérifions les informations avant de les partager. Donc, c'est ce qui est une bonne chose. Euh, nous avons aussi pu constater avec ce, ce graphique, hein, en, en bleu, rouge et, et jaune, que beaucoup d'entre nous sont quand même atteints par des fausses nouvelles, des fausses rumeurs, des, des fausses solutions. Euh, 18% d'entre ceux qui, étaient, euh, qui ont répondu à la question euh, confirment que... Euh, 26 à 35 des informations qu'ils reçoivent sont des, des fausses informations ou des mauvaises informations. Et 31 confirment donc que 10 à 25 euh, sont des informations euh, de qualité. Euh, euh, aussi, des, 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 10 à 25 des informations qu'ils reçoivent sont euh, mauvaises. Euh, cela pour confirmer ce que euh, euh, le directeur général de de l'OMS avait dit quand il disait que nous ne sommes pas en train de combattre seulement une épidémie, mais nous devons aussi actuellement combattre l'infodémie, hein, c'est-à-dire une pandémie de mauvaises informations. Euh, aux, comme le COVID-19 qui se propage un peu partout dans le, le monde, les euh, fausses informations se, parta, euh, se, se dissémine, euh, se propage également dans le monde actuellement. Alors, avant de parler un peu plus des solutions, donc, nous allons euh, peut-être euh, prendre quelques réactions par rapport à cela. So, before continuing, maybe Max, we can uh, hear some of the reaction or some of the people who, who confirm that they have been uh, victim of uh, this uh, misinformation yeah, and how it happens you. how it happens and why it happens like that yeah thank you andre and uh, thank you for a summary presentation again um of course um it's not only covid that has a misinformation sometimes we are living in an environment where there's too much information and in this circumstance we are we are forced to look for more information even when we have so it will be this is also the time to open up again and hear from colleagues on what's happening in terms of our how information is uh, shared among and between ourselves, the countries and different sectors where I live, but more focused to agriculture sector. So, you're welcome to give your reactions, suggestions, experience. Hello, Max. Yes. 
Uh, this is this is Sam Peter from Uganda. I work with the local government in Bovuma district. Welcome, Sam. Yeah. Now, with the issues to do with the misinformation, there are so many many people depending on how they perceive the the COVID disease, and the, we've also had people think that we the Africans we are a little bit resistant to the disease and the, it's also becoming critical and where even access to very critical information is lacking, especially me who works in a, a completely different environment, the islands. But uh, all what people are doing here is whoever comes in is reprimanded. Actually, they think whoever comes from outside is sick and has COVID. Mm. which is also which may also cre create scenarios where people become a little bit violent when people resist to be quarantined to be isolated so those are some of the challenges we work in the very rural places and with the communities that work in a different style oh yeah <coughs> thank you Actually, so, some so what I was also going to say that uh, still also in the advent of COVID and uh, we, the, the other challenge is uh, when people take up roles that are not theirs. For example, in my district, we have a health educator, but we also have a communication officer. And these two people have, are trained differently to convey messages. Possibly the communication officer would be doing a better job. But now we have a health educator doing it. So in that environment and within the agriculture setting, my question is how do we really help the community to get the right information, which is properly packaged so that they can benefit from it? Yes, back to you, Max. Okay, thank you, Sam. And uh, actually the issue of uh, how the information is conveyed uh, versus the perception of people, these are all very relevant and important things. Because uh, now in the village, if you're in a city, people think that you're a COVID victim already. So this is also a big challenge. So if you're an extension person and you even take seed, people may avoid your seed. This could be real. So Dr. Issa. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Ola. Ola Tau, I can't pronounce the name very well. Sorry. My name is Dr. Issa. I'm from uh, Nifas. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much. much. I want to uh, I want to combine this issue of uh, uh, misinformation with uh, something bigger and that is more fundamental that gets me troubled, especially in the wake of this COVID-19. Uh, in the face of the lockdown, I, I don't know how it is, maybe you share experience from your country, from other countries. In Nigeria, there is lockdown. Uh, th there is a fear that if we are in, in, in health crisis now, and we are not forward looking to a large extent. It means that at the end of the day, when the health crisis is over, they will go back to food crisis. Yeah. Reason being that if there is lockdown, in Nigeria, the only set of people that are exempted are the health officers. And mm -hmm. probably the movement of food here and there. Well, I mean, some essential, you call them essential workers. And some of us have advocated that when you talk about essential workers, in, 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 in the sense that you are looking at the future, then agri extension workers, agents, those who meet farmers regularly, should be regarded as people on essential duties, and that should be allowed to move. Though we know that there is a problem, 
but that calls for the fact that okay they need to be trained and probably equipped with uh, personal protection equipment so that they can function very well i am going back to this because when you say misinformation with respect to farmers the set of people that farmers actually depend on so much with respect to information are the agri extension agents so if yeah. we look at in a situation where you say, okay, I think the extension agent should be locked up too in the house. We should know that our technology dissemination and other things will suffer, which will invariably lead to food crisis in the next season. Yeah. What I actually want is, is this our advocation this this issue of making them to be essential workers train them equip them and let them go to the field what is the experience in other areas that we can learn that is important to us there are various problems of misinformation for example look at adulteration of chemicals whether you like it or not you can package it and still put it under 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 misinformation. Now that you say agents should be logged up, the who informs them? Are we not giving opportunity or field day to those who are not professionals to take up? I mean, to carry the day as far as agriculture is concerned. That is my own concern. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> yeah, I think. Uh, this has been a concern to a number of countries of uh, about uh, the essential services. And I, I saw uh, a paper written by some communication uh, director from IFAD talking about let one crisis not create another crisis, which it tells with exactly what you've said. Okay, so this is very important in, in a way that I think the essential services should uh, that we we have avenues of seeing how really who have the opportunity to produce or who have the chance to get out to produce could be helped. So let me go to Elisa from Uganda. <laughs> Elizabeth. Yes, thank you, Max, and thank you, uh, all the people around. My name is Elizabeth from Uganda. And to add on what my colleagues have shared, it is really unfortunate that we are embracing the various approaches of sharing information and at the same time misusing them. Also to note that there may be different motives for spreading the, the fake, fake information and uh, while some do so when they are well intentioned, others may have intentions of promoting their own agendas. Some want to attract attention, but the challenge with this, whatever the reasons of sharing this fake information, the outcome is the same. We play on people's emotions, we cause fear, we cause prejudices, all which is not really necessary and important we should stay away from sharing the fake information. Uh -huh, yeah, That's a nice thank one. you. I see, uh, I see Koraf, then comes to Uganda after Koraf, let's hear from Beatrice. So Koraf, a fog. Hello? Colleagues from Koraf? Hippolyte. Hippolyte. And maybe we, we, we try to, to shorten a little bit our contribution yeah. because uh, we are running out of time. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for the initiative. Uh, I, we really appreciate that. Uh, what I would like to uh, to say is uh, there is uh, some ongoing 
initiative uh, now uh, at uh, EFDC, CORAF and SILS. Uh, they are trying to get together to provide some information as a watch. And uh, I, would, I would like, because I, as you know, uh, uh, for the production, we really need uh, information on, uh, on uh, input including uh, uh, seed, fertilizer, and pesticide. And uh, uh, the three organizations uh, uh, under the umbrella of uh, uh, ECOWAS, the three organizations are trying to provide information on uh, uh, fertilizer, uh, seed, uh, and uh, pesticide for the availability and uh, also the uh, the quantity that are available in the in the region, and uh, I would like to suggest that uh, uh, we try to find a way that we can link uh, uh, to those organizations to also uh, to help uh, uh, people that are in this group to get access to those information. That's what I would like to suggest. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Yeah, I, the issues of seed and what, yeah, that's very important. So let me go there to a last person. Let's, uh, oh, there are two people, but let me get quickly, Beatrice, quick, just quick intervention so that we move to the next. Yeah, thank you very much, Max. Uh, for me, I'm thinking concerning this issue. I think we as extension actors, as professionals, we also have a role to play. For example, we are in so many of these um, platforms where such misinformation is coming out. And uh, for us, like in the case of Uganda, you know that we've been like taking in even someone who's trying to circulate uh, such information, is putting down this person and says, are you sure? Where is, do you have evidence? and also trying to discourage such information because when it appears on one platform, you know that many people are going to, uh, are going to forward it to other platforms and, uh, and, then, uh, and, and then it moves on. So I think on the platforms where we are, we should really be guards on such information and telling people, please don't, uh, don't propagate this, don't move on, those, don't forward this because it, it comes on our platforms and as technical people, I think we are responsible to really uh, raise these people and even inbox them and telling them not to spread such misinformation. Okay, so Prof. Dele, uh, Dele just one second Some to, so that we move. Yes, thank you very much. Just to add that, um, like in Nigeria now, the federal government has actually realized that extension is very, very important. And they are now giving them also, treating them just like uh, essential workers because they know the system is here. And so that's even the committee that has been set up to make sure that, yes, they move the inputs and other things to see how they can get to the farmers and encourage farmers to, to, keep, to keep on producing. Even during this lockdown, there's a committee that is Think of that and they are sending this input to them. So this also means that some of them can be informing the farmers of what is actually the true position of things. Apart from the issue of the, um, this issue of this um, um, fake news. Fake news are everywhere. There's nothing can do about it, but we can only really help, just as my, my colleague said from Uganda, Lizzie, that yes, from our platform, we can just try to tell the truth, what this risk change is, so that they will, they will not take that as a real issue, but that this is actually the issue. The real truth is this is it, because it's coming from somebody that is well known that this is actually a petitioner. Thank you very much. Hello, Kai. Hello. 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 Yes, you can go ahead. Hello. Okay. Uh, my question is uh, what is the plan because many youth who are based in uh, particularly in urban where the lockdown has a strong effect on their livelihood in uh, agriculture 
both in the crop livestock uh, uh, fisheries aquaculture what is the plan for us what what is the mitigation plan we have uh, that we can use to encourage them to reach out to the youth land because many of them they don't they have small capital particularly those who are uh, uh, based in uh, urban that are practicing aquaculture in urban so what is the plan how can we, uh, what strategy can we use to reach out to them yes max i i think we have to to come back to our agenda and then we continue with that question which is the last part what is the way forward can we max continue now with the presentation then we pack that important question then when we come back we all discuss way forward as the participants could also be thinking about that important question let's move on to the next presentation thank you thank you max so um how to to avoid uh, spreading uh, uh, fake information this is what i'm i'm showing here quickly now so we there, there are three steps that are proposed in this magazine the smithsonian magazine if you look at it i will share all the presentations by the way yeah? so we'll be able to to uh to, to 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 check after so the first step is of course to check the source all the time and now this means also that if you are a leader if you are someone who is in, in an influencer in your in your area in your country or in your organization you have to be very careful because if you are the director and you send some fake information then people will immediately believe it because you are the director so the first aspect of this point is check the source information but also even if it's someone that we should trust sometimes we have to double check that's the point here now the second point about check the author why well, if any any uh, written publication or website or whatever is uh, information you receive always check the author and scan on the web who is that author because there are people that are already recognized trusted worldwide and those who are just newcomers or opportunists, as, uh, as uh, Elizabeth said. Now the third point is to check the content. Sometimes we just forward, we look at the, the, the nice uh, uh, publication with maybe some nice diagrams and so on, but we don't check the content at all. We just presume that uh, because the title is relevant because maybe the summary is relevant we can share and others will digest it instead of us checking first so we have to be careful about that also don't spread don't just forward look until you you reach the end of the document there are many fake documents that starts with genuine information but at the end or somewhere in the middle there is something totally wrong. So be careful about that, not to spread this type of uh, documents. Now, there are some sites that are uh, recommended. Uh, if you go to this site here, you have a lot of resources. These are the, I would say, the, 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 the worldwide accepted source of information. So just try to look at this one. It's already a lot. Uh, I'm just going to share quickly some of them. For instance, um, okay, this is the article I was just sharing before, how to avoid misinformation about COVID-19. So if you look there, you have a lot of information, very interesting. Uh, I highly recommend this uh, publication from the Smithsonian. Um, regarding source of information also, you have this one. I've already put that also in your, in your PowerPoint. So everything related to even the vaccine, the medical and scientific journal that deals with COVID-19, webinars and so on, you can get it here. 
Now, when it comes to figures, how many people are dying, how many people, cases do you have in your countries, and so on, please use the most uh, trusted sources, like this one, word meters. This one gives you a lot of uh, data, and it's, it's a very reliable one. So today, if you want to know how many cases there are uh, in, uh, worldwide, it's 3 million now. The death is 2,000. Sorry? Not showing on the screen. Do you see on the screen? Do you see the... Can you see my, my screen or not? Your screen is not... Uh, cursor, I'm not seeing your screen. You're not seeing the content. Please don't be away from the share. Oh, no, we can't see. Okay. I can't see that. Now, I think I have to change something. No, sorry, very content, sorry. No content there. Maybe the no color. Content. Yes, no content. Yes. Apologize for this. Let me reshare so it will be now. Um, okay. Where is it? Not color. Maybe like, like it looks like a blank. But, but I'm sure it will be clear when, when it's, I'm sure it will be clear when it is sent to when it is open on the computer. And the way you were, it was getting clear, but I think it was one slide which was not uh, coming up. The rest were fine. So let's just move. That one is the blank. Click. Do you yeah, see? Yeah, we can see that. Yes. Do you now. see some stats now? Yes. No, yes. let, it, let him share it so I can... I yeah, can yeah, share. I'll share, of course. I will share, of course. So th this is a kind of, um, of a, a statistical uh, a database where you can see uh -huh. everything, even for, your, your, for the continent here. You can see for all continents, for Africa, if you want to sort, you will see what's the situation in every country. If you want to look for very specific, let's say, I don't know, Nigeria, what is the situation there? Then you will see immediately Nigeria is 1,300 cases now, 40 deaths. So instead of asking people uh, that you don't, you can't trust sometimes, or sometimes if you want to, 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 th to know what's happening in other countries, Please use this kind of uh, source of uh, very reliable information. I've put all this in the, the presentation, of course, so you'll be able to uh, to, 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 to go back to, to that uh, after. Now, maybe the last slide that, uh, no, this is not the slide. The last slide that I uh, wanted to present, you have all followed the, 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 the chat discussion and eh? the chat box. And there is yes. one announcement there sent by, um, sent by uh, GFRAS. So there is uh, IFAD uh, COVID-19 response that will be launched soon. So maybe, maybe Carl, if he's there or Ingrid, uh, maybe you can uh, explain this a little bit. Okay, so maybe, yeah, he's busy. So th this is uh, uh, just to create our awareness that something is going to come from IFAD side. So we have to, to listen and to, to, to approach our government people. This is a response to what we, our, our expectation about uh, the involving more government people and uh, doing some advocacy for uh, to, to, to support extension worker at uh, country level. Yeah, so that is my, uh, I think that is uh, my, my last slide, uh, uh, Max. Uh, all these resources will be shared, so um, you can go through it again after. Thank you. Very okay, much. thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Andre for that uh, summary presentation again, which gives us very good uh, information 
on how we can contribute to curbing down at least the 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 anxiety also you know when information is just shared like that it brings a lot of challenges people get start panicking uh people don't settle of doing very important things uh they they feel the things have gone out of hand so it is our contribution therefore to support governments uh government efforts in 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 reducing one the spread but also reassuring the communities that things will be definitely fine but by providing correct information andre mentioned about the gifras and i see there's a colleague from gifras the global forum for road advisory services in this in this call perhaps we would like to request if it is agreed to talk briefly about the the call on competition that if you can uh give a a write up or a case of how you're managing issues of covid in your country uh the selection will be done and we could move to the next stages so agreed are you there or oh, anybody from gifras secretary i think they have left oh okay so anyway there will be that call and it will be sent to especially now that you've heard about it to all of you uh you will respond but i also want to say that uh right now there are number of people producing very good material fao extension department has produced a very good uh, policy document shared already by degi so if, we, if you don't have we can also share that with you other people uh, organizations again the fao with the colleagues from the pharma field school unit are developing a very good training manual in how, how you can work how those who are not in a total lockdown how you can support farmers during this period in, with the field school but of course ensuring distancing so mm -hmm. with this now can we open and say uh we give uh, feedback to andre but also your own experiences in terms of the content of the presentation and also maybe max uh, the way forward this is this was the first webinar yeah. uh, on covid-19 um if we have some other topics of course that we we think we we need to deal with uh, in yeah. the next webinar yeah any suggestion like prof uh, delhi already had something like the 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 health crisis and food crisis that is a good one to think about <laughs> yes absolutely maybe we should also even talk also about the, the, the crisis along the, all the chain the value chain okay. how it's happening it's max the people the focus are not they are complaining that they're not that you summary before i continue oh oh somebody yeah the, oh sorry somebody, somebody very sorry about that in french okay oh. donc je je vais refaire le, le résumé uh, en, fran en français donc de, de ce qui a été uh, expliqué tout à l'heure uh, je vais partager à nouveau l'écran donc da, dans le dans la présentation de tout à l'heure on a expliqué que Euh, il y a trois étapes principales à suivre pour éviter la propagation de, 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 de fausses informations, de fausses nouvelles. Donc la première, c'est de vérifier la source, s'assurer que la source de l'information est fiable. Et nous donnons donc une série de sources d'informations ici que vous pouvez utiliser. Euh, cela veut dire aussi en contrepartie que si vous êtes une source d'information fiable pour les autres, Vous devez faire deux fois plus attention pour ne pas vous-même induire vos collègues euh, en erreur. La deuxième euh, mesure qu'il faut prendre, c'est de vérifier toujours l'auteur ou le, celui qui écrit euh, ou qui prépare une présentation. Est-ce que c'est quelqu'un de fiable, de sûr euh, Scanner sur Internet son profil, qu'est-ce qu'il a déjà publié, etc. pour être sûr. 
troisième étape, c'est de toujours chercher euh, de, de lire intégralement le contenu. Ne pas seulement lire le titre et le sommaire, mais continuer jusqu'à la fin avant de partager les informations. Parce que parfois, il y a des informations au beau milieu ou vers la fin d'une publication, ou euh, plutôt de d'une présentation qui sont fausses et qui vont induire ceux qui vont le lire en erreur. Donc, vérifiez bien avant de distribuer les informations que toutes les informations du début jusqu'à la fin sont vraies et pas seulement ceux du milieu. Donc, pour cela, il faut donc se, se documenter un peu et nous vous donnons ici donc une, une source de d'informations, beaucoup de sources d'informations sur le, le COVID-19. Ceux-ci sont euh, ceux, parmi ceux qui sont les plus connus. Voilà. Thank you, Max. I am done. Max, are you there? James Max has left. No, no, no he's, he's there. there. He's there. So maybe, maybe moving forward while he's, uh, he's uh, maybe adjusting his mic or. Um, the question is now: How do you want? Which topic do you want to uh, to discuss more in depth? In, uh, in the next uh, uh, session. Uh, and of course, uh, how often can we organize such webinar? Is it uh, monthly or maybe bi-monthly? How do we want to do it? La question qui se pose donc maintenant, c'est est-ce que vous voulez, uh, quelle est, la, question, quelle est le, le, la thématique sur le, le COVID et les, le secteur agricole que vous proposez? pour qu'on discute pour la prochaine fois. Et est-ce que vous pensez qu'on peut le faire, euh, on peut faire le webinaire par mois, chaque mois, ou bien euh, deux fois par mois, par exemple? Yes, Beatrice. I, uh... We can't hear you, Beatrice. Uh, her microphone is muted. Hello? Hello? Are you hearing yeah. me now? Hello? Yes. Yes, Beatrice. Oh. No. No more. Sorry. Hello. Okay, I'm saying that for the round. Is hearing me? Now we can hear you. Start from there, Beatrice. <laughs> okay, I'm saying that for the Eastern Africa, we can have uh, one around the locust issue where we are, how we've been involved as extension workers, and what more has to be done. And also maybe to really find out what is the, 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 the status of the situation right now. Hello. Have you heard? Yes. Yes. That's Did you fine. hear? Yes. Yes. But okay. can I see something from West Africa? Yeah. From Nifas. Nifas, yes, please. Okay. Yeah, this is Professor Stella Odebode from uh, Nifa, Nigeria. Yeah. I think just like Beatrice said, we need to also look at the situation in the western part of Africa here. And then I want us to consider the issue of gender in, in the contributions. Let's look at what the male, female, and the youth are doing as, and what uh, extension advice you know, we, we need to dis disseminate or information. Information we need to disseminate to 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 the, to the, to the farmers. 
and what we have to be doing now, especially at this COVID time. You know, a lot of people in the rural areas are not really, really, you know, um, very, very conversant or maybe adapting to the precautions. Uh, so I think we should look at the issue of gender, youth, men, women, uh, regarding their participation in rural development. So that's what I think uh, I, am, I, am, I am adding to what Beatrice just said. Okay. Andre, do you want to translate those so that others know? Okay. So, um, donc il y a des, il y a des demandes. Là, on est en train de collecter. Qu'est-ce que vous souhaitez qu'on fasse pour les prochaines sessions? Bon, il y a ceux qui ont mentionné euh, pour l'Afrique de l'Est, donc euh, le, le problème du des sauterelles. Et si on peut organiser donc les discussions sur les, les sauterelles. Euh, il y a aussi euh, euh, d'autres questions comme ce qui vient d'être euh, euh, présenté tout à l'heure. Ah, je ne me rappelle même plus c'était quoi. Euh, mais dans le, le chat, vous voyez aussi, il y a quelqu'un qui demande concernant les, le problème de, de la pêche hein, et de la pêche pour les, les îles notamment. Donc, il y a Sam Pira là qui, qui, qui parle un peu de, de ça. Ah oui, euh, le, le prof Stella tout à l'heure avait mentionné le, le problème des, des producteurs vraiment à la base hein, et, et de, du manque d'informations qui, qui, qui prévaut ou de comment est-ce qu'ils doivent faire face à la situation. Et d'ailleurs, pour le Nigeria, il y a notre, notre prof qui avait aussi mentionné le problème de comment est-ce que ça va se passer, l'économie rurale après euh, après ce Covid-19. Donc voilà autant de thèmes qui, qui préoccupent notre communauté actuellement de, de vulgarisateurs et qui pourront être traités sûrement dans les, dans les euh, webinaires, les prochains webinaires. Oui. Allô? Hello? Oui, Allez-y, Ibrahim. Yeah, Allez-y. Oui, moi, mon problème est que euh, pour, pour éviter la propagation euh, dans le milieu rural, nous devons plus sensibiliser les, les, acteurs, les, les acteurs agricoles avec des messages de sensibilisation, parler de vidéos dans toutes sortes de langues nationaux, internationaux. Donc, c'est la meilleure façon. Donc, c'est la meilleure façon pour éviter la propagation de manière euh, directe, tout ça. Là. Parce que jusqu'à présent, on n'a pas. Euh, un médicament adéquat pour, et pour lutter contre la maladie. Mais on peut toujours sensibiliser avec des vidéos dans toute forme de communication. Donc, c'est un peu ça. Yes, so, so what uh, Ibrahim is, uh, is saying that uh, we need the more uh, communication materials, tools to sensitize uh, until we find some Some solution to this COVID, we need to enhance the, the sensitization uh, so that uh, farmers are aware and um, the, the disease doesn't spread uh, too, too fast and too much in the, in the, on the continent. So maybe Max, we have to wrap up now. Anything else? Let's uh, give the last chance. Uh, Sam was uh, failing to raise up his hand. But you can now, I have, we have seen the message. If you have uh, any contribution, please go ahead. Can, can I ask something? Yes, yes, Max. Yes. Yes. This is Sam. Now, I, I was also reacting, I was also thinking through when Beatrice talked about the value chains and the To me, this side where we work, an example is what I've also written down about the fish value chain. All the stakeholders within the fish value chain are being affected. Prices for silver fish are dropping. Our neighbors from Rwanda, Southern Sudan, and uh, Kenya, the, 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 the movements are restricted. So the purchase, the taking of the silver fish has, has stalled a bit. So now that means at the end of the people day, 
the communities that are surviving and delivering de <coughs> deriving an income from this enterprise are going to be severely affected. And now we also look beyond that. If at the end of the day the lockdown is uplifted, will we be able to take children back to school? Because this is the source of income for their livelihoods and the children will have to go back to school. So that's the contribution I wanted to make at the time. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, those are issues of the economic losses. Uh, we also we also talk about countries now starting the, the rainy seasons are on. How do we support the farmers? Dr. Prof. Stella, you had, uh, I heard you say something. Yes, I, I was saying that uh, we should also talk about the rules of extension, especially to the farmers at this time in every part of the continent, so that actively we will all have the same vision and we pursue it uh, for food security. Now we, uh, we have entered into the rainy season uh, and I think we should provide information. It could also be uh, like we have communication materials that could uh, actually disseminate information to our farmers so that the end of COVID we will not be food insecure. I think it's relevant in all continents. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so uh, if the if um, if there is nothing burning, I think we've uh, gone beyond our time by almost twenty minutes because of the the rich discussions. Since this is our first uh, call on this topic, we shall rethink and also uh, give you. Uh, additional information so that we we agree on the how to manage the next uh, call that we have otherwise we thank you very very much and i hand over to andre to to say last words and uh, conclude the call ah okay um yeah maybe we, we just uh we are grateful that uh, you've contributed in this uh uh, D group discussion. It's really important to know what uh, what's happening in the, in the different regions of Africa, in the different countries, and it's also important to know what are our concerns. So um, we will continue this uh, kind of uh, um, exchange between uh, between all the in the Afas network, and uh, we expect that you will continue. Um, uh, providing more feedback and also suggestion, proposing some solutions, sharing the experience that you've uh, got before. Uh, I think with that we can uh, we can uh, say goodbye to everybody and uh, see you next time. Okay. Thank stay you. Andrew. Safe, stay healthy. Thank you, Andrew. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye. Good discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye, Andrea and Nonko. Everybody, bye -bye. participants. Bye -bye. God bless you all. Stay bye -bye. safe. Stay safe. Stay, stay safe. safe.